what I'm going to talk about today is um, really how the climate prediction doc net project and the, the various different variety of ways in which we use um, Jasmine and, and Jasmine services. Um, so first of all, what is climateprediction.net? This is a, a volunteer computing project where we run climate models on people's home computers. So um, we kind of centrally set up all the experiments, send them out, members of the public compute the um, climate models for us and send the results back to one of our different upload servers. So in the, this graphic on the, the left, each of the yellow dots is a, a volunteer who computes model simulations for us. And the sort of white dots are our, our sort of main collaborative centers and you know maybe where we've got um, upload servers to receive data from our experiments. We've got a sort of wide variety of, of different models available now, and we tend to do very large initial conditions ensembles to, to study extreme events um, or do experiments where we're, we're perturbing different parameters in the models to look at um, model sensitivity and, and bias reduction. Um, We've also sort of initially, uh, sort of recently brought on the, the open IFS model, which is from ECMWF, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So how, or, or in the different ways in which, which CPDN uses Jasmine services. So I guess initially the way, or the, the sort of primary way in which we want to use um, Jasmine is the group workspaces and the, the data storage facilities that this um, provides us. Um, as a project, you know, because we're doing very large ensembles, one of the things that we, um, are very good at doing is is generating lots and lots of data so we need somewhere that we can we can put this so the the group work set spaces um, is a, a sort of great way for us to um, be able to do this um, and because we want to actually get our data efficiently into the group workspaces the way in which we do this is we we have an upload server at Jasmine, at, at Jasmine. So initially this was a, a physical machine that we had um, on site at, at the Rutherford Afton lab. Um, now um, we have a virtual machine in the, the cloud tenancy, which acts as our upload server. So the volunteers from wherever they are actually send the, their results directly um, to that upload server we do some sorting of it and transfer things off to various um, group workspaces. Now, the big thing about the group workspaces is that it, it enables um, a lot of collaboration for us um, as a project. Um, when we sort of started, we had, you know, uh, one sort of group workspace, which was the, the CPDN Rapid, Rapid Watch group workspace. And this um, was a very, for a UK, very much UK focused project and was for sort of sharing data from large perturbed parameter simulations with HADCM3. Now we've sort of expanded our use of the, the group workspaces. So we, we kind of use or, or hold data in probably five additional um, sort of project specific group workspace. Two of those are, are NERC related, two are, are the sort of Met Office CSSP um, activities and, and one's externally supported. And the really big thing that I guess it's enabled us as a, as a project to do is to collaborate, collaborate very effectively with our, our colleagues, um, both sort of within nationally and, and internationally. So the graphic here is showing sort of I guess collaborators that we have that that kind of um, maybe log in to use um, data on on Jasmine services um, that we hold. So that's the the group workspaces, but then having the data there, um, you know, obviously it's not very convenient, particularly if we've got um, our remote collaborators if they are. 
um, just using, uh, you know, having to try and download this, this vast quantity of data that we tend to generate. And so this is where, you know, we really then rely heavily on things like the um, scientific analysis machines in order to actually analyze the data. And so our collaborators can then sort of log in and, and have the advantage of, of analyzing data, um, sort of the compute close to the data um, that we're analyzing. And then as a big part of this is actually being able to use the, the Lotus processing cl cluster to um, efficiently extract and, and process the very large ensembles that we, we tend to generate. Sort of leading on from this, sort of further extending our, our use of Jasmine um, as uh, we might know that we sort of um, have, as I said, large amounts of data in group work to have space for doing the scientific analysis. We then need to sort of heavily use the, the tape storage system in order to actually optimize our use to make sure that people have usable space um, in the group workspaces. So we've been using that quite a lot. Um, and also the other big thing is that then it's quite convenient from the group workspaces to be able to um, send data off to, to have it ingested into, into the CEDAR archive. Um, and so sort of saying a bit more about the way in which we use that is, is really for a convenient way of, of long-term storage of our data. Um, I'm, as I'm sure most people are aware, journals and, and funders are, are more heavily sort of requiring that, that data is deposited in a reputable and reliable data repository. So being able to easily sort of move data from the group workspaces into the, the CEDA archive is um, very, very useful. And the way in which we've done this is not only just deposited data into the CEDA archive, but we've also produced um, sort of data publications as well for, for important data sets that, that back up this um, use of um, the data deposited in CEDA. So the other way um, in which we kind of use Jasmine is really extending our use in, in, the in our cloud tenancy. And this is um, to also use our, our model development server there. So this is a machine that we have that we really are looking to develop new applications on for use in, in climateprediction.net make new regions and, and do our, all our initial testing. Um, so just to sort of explain, I guess, the way in which um, having our build system within the, the Jasmine tenancy has really um, helped us. Um, sort of before we were using um, Jasmine as a, as a host for this machine, um, we basically had two main models on um, climateprediction.net. So we had the, the HADCM3 coupled atmosphere ocean model and um, weather at home, which is a, a global atmosphere model um, run at a coarse resolution with a, a nested high resolution um, regional model. Since we've actually um, been using our uh, Jasmine as our um, sort of development platform machine. Um, we've now brought on several more models onto the um, climateprediction.net system. So this includes a, a high resolution global atmospheric model, um, had AM4, and we've got two different um, sort of horizontal resolution configurations of that. We also have a, a slab version of this model um, that we um, now have available. And as I said before, we've sort of been working with ECMWF to bring the OpenIFS model, which is their, um, if you like, academic version of their um, IFS, their forecasting system um, that's available at ECMWF. So we've brought that to, to, to run under um, climateprediction.net. 
as I was saying before, the other sort of main use of this machine is really in um, making new uh, weather at home regions, as you can see. From this graphic, here's a sort of different regions that we have sort of set up um, within the model. We're quite prolific at making these regions. I'm not quite sure that there's very much of the, the sort of populated globe that we haven't got one of these boxes over um, yet, but um, it's really made that process a lot easier having um, that machine available to us. So that's the sort of um, model development side of things. The other um, services that we've been using within Jasmine um, is sort of more recently is, is a note, notebook service. And this is really from different workshop and workshops and, and hackathon events that we've been running. So um, I guess just before Christmas, I ran a, an extreme weather and impacts workshop um, to train early career researchers in Brazil on, on how to do um, extreme event attribution. Um, and as recently as, as a couple of weeks ago, as part of the um, MOAP, so the Met Office Academic Partnership um, series of hackathons in um, the run up to COP26, um, we ran a, an energy and climate hackathon. And these were really um, all hosted and, and run um, on the, the Jasmine system. So. The thing that it really enabled is that we got lots of international participants from, from all over the globe. So it gives a single place where they're accessing their data from and, and doing their compute. So it's a common area in which people can work. Um, they used um, the, the SI analysis machines and, and the Jupyter Notebook service. And this was really particularly useful, the Jupyter Notebook in the, in the hackathon where you know, perhaps people didn't really want full access into the analysis machine, analysis machines, or they weren't really, um, you know, they just wanted to be able to get on quickly and start coding um, and, and doing what they needed to do for their particular project task. And the one thing I, I really wanted to take this opportunity to do with to, it to say is that that Jasmine support and the documentation they provided um, in running both of these events was extremely helpful. Um, and it really made things as um, easy as we, we could for actually running um, both of these events. Um, the big sort of take home message, if you like, for if you're thinking of running a similar event yourself, um, would be to really try and get the, the participants to um, connect in advance of, of the meeting and um, be sure that they can actually um, access um, all the bits that they, they need to. Um, we did that for both of these. We did encourage people to do this, but typically, I guess, people decide that they're going to leave it to the last minute. So it gets to the sort of day one and, and there's a lot of, of debugging to do. Um, I just also wanted to, to point you to um, a, a sort of blog that they've, they've got on, on CEDA um, if you want to hear more about the, the different um, MOAP um, COP26 hackathons that have been supported by um, Jasmine. So on to a few sort of um, science highlights as to um, what we think, what, what, you know, to show you what working um, effectively and using Jasmine has, has helped enabled. So the first one is um, some results from this, this attribution workshop that we did. So here we were looking at a, a heavy precipitation event in a particular state called Minas Gerais in Brazil that occurred in, in January 2020. And this was really all done virtually, as you can see from the sort of uh, workshop photo. And um, we looked and sort of quantified the different um, extent of, of losses that could be attributed to climate change um, as, the, as this. And this was run over a week and we've now sort of submitted the results from this um, to the Climate Resilience and Sustainability um, Journal. Um, another work which is really showing, I guess, the strengths of the, the sort of in, international collaboration is some work that we did as part of the Gotham project. Um, and this is um, work by Georgia de Capua. And um, we were um, working with sort of colleagues in, in sort of Germany, Europe, um, India in order to, to do this. 
and um, looking at um, increased temperatures, uh, temperatures in, in Russia um, and heavy rainfall in Pakistan, and then looking at sort of the probability of, of getting concurrent um, extreme events. Um, and that's now just been accepted in, in nature climate change. Um, the other thing on the sort of model development side is, um, as I said, um, getting the um, open IFS model and, and open IFS at, at home running on the um, CPTN platform. And um, we have that published in um, uh, GMD paper. Um, again, it sort of um, shows in the in the results here that that um, we get a, a sort of obviously a much larger um, ensemble of um, output from using the the volunteer computing, which is the sort of columns on the left. And in the middle, this is an equivalent sort of setup of run and resolution run in house at ETMWF. So you can see that we're really helping kind of map out those distributions a lot better. But it's worth pointing out that if you go to the much higher um, horizontal resolutions um, that you are available in the in the full sort of forecast model, then you still kind of get some differences in, in how you're kind of um, capturing these extremes. And there's uh, the sort of background graphic is also showing differences in, in runtime um, for our different models that we, we have available on the system. And then the other one that um, I guess any of you have heard me speak before, you know, it's one of our, our sort of go to experiments to, to talk about, um, I, I, even though it's a few years old now, is um, a sort of live experiment that we did with the Guardian newspaper um, on the Somerset levels floods in, in 2013 and 14. And we produced an extremely large, even by our standards, um, data set in order to do this um, analysis. And I think the thing that um, is really, really good as an exemplar on this is that we, you know, we did the analysis of, of working out how um, human activity has sort of uh, increased the likelihood of, of perhaps seeing these these events um, and publish those in a in a sort of scientific output paper. Um, but we also deposited the data in in. Cedar, so we can encourage people um, to use sort of using fair data principles in order to actually access the data. And then also um, a data paper um, we provided in order to um, also sort of promote reuse of, of this data set that's available. So just to finish off, um, as you can see, we, we're sort of already using um, Jasmine and Jasmine services really quite quite widely throughout the project. And um, this has been really successful for us. And, um, you know, just to sort of say in the, in the future, we're really considering moving um, a lot of our, our core service machines um, out of out of Oxford uh, into um, the cloud tenancy at Jasmine, um, and this will sort of help facilitate um, various other bits of data transfer and things that we're doing. So I think I'll um, stop there, and uh, if anybody's got any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer them. <laughs>